give me to Lord Jesus, give me to the grace that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. And praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, thank the Lord once again for this Friday evening service. Of the Gospel Assembly Church Puna, we would like to welcome all you saints that have joined us for this service tonight. And it's it's really uh, an honor and a privilege to be uh, hearing the word of the Lord. And as of now, we are we are really privileged that God ha has not yet sent a famine of hearing the word of God, as the word says. But there will come a time where Right now there is a famine of coming coming to the house of the Lord. Uh, but there is coming a time where there will be a famine, the scripture says, of hearing the word of God. And saints, as we have time, let's, uh, let's accumulate, let's be filled uh, with the word of God, not just the scriptures, uh, because scriptures, um, the scholars study the scriptures, but the disciples follow the word. We just don't want to be scholars studying scriptures. The Pharisees studied the scriptures. Jesus said, "Search you search the scriptures, uh, but you don't know the scriptures talk about me because the scriptures have not become the word. When the scriptures become word, they dwell in us. When we implement the scriptures in our lives, life, they become the word of God. And when the word of God comes in, it, 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 it brings those changes in our lives. It just shows us things the way we, things the way it is. Uh, the core that we are singing here tonight, keep me true, Lord Jesus, because there's a race that I must run. And along those, along that race, there are little victories that I will win. There will be some battles that I will lose. Uh, but keep me true, O oh Father. When I lose, uh, I don't want to cover up my, 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 my faults and my weaknesses. We were talking about uh, being open before the Lord uh, last service on Wednesday night. That there's a there's a tremendous blessing when we come before the Lord with honesty. See the the the, the thief on the cross was honest, uh, and that's what Jesus separated on the cross. He he separated between two people, the dishonest and the honest. See, and, and I told you all that it's very easy to be honest. It's difficult to be pure. It's difficult to be holy. It's, it takes a it takes a while. It takes it takes a time. But I can decide to be honest today. I can decide to come before the Lord the way I am today. Uh, that's that's very important, saints. That that as as the men of God in the Bible, we've seen that there were times that they covered up their 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 uh, weaknesses. Uh, but when they were honest and they came before the Lord, uh, the Lord always met with them. The Lord always uh, helped them to get back uh, on that on that track. Uh, the devil saints tries to blind our eyes, and the devil wants to wants us to be comfortable in sin. Uh, wants us to be comfortable in having a form of godliness. The devil doesn't want us to go on to perfection. The devil doesn't mind. If we keep coming to church, if we keep serving in whatever capacity we are doing the work of the Lord, if we are playing in the band or if we help the church in cleaning or if we go and evangelize a little bit, the devil is not bothered with that. But the devil is bothered when this, these scriptures become the word of God. When these scriptures become life, the, the, the devil wants to blind us. Blind us to our own self our own weaknesses and blind us to the word of God and blind us uh, to, to the truth. He, 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 he wants us to have an outward perfection, an outward pretension of, of, of the zealous Christian. He's okay with that and most of us have had that outward zealous uh, pretension of a Christian. And that's how he takes us away from the great salvation. We looked at the scripture last service in Hebrews, the second chapter that that, that how do, um, uh, what way of punishment will we have if we neglect 
uh, so great a salvation. Paul talks to the to the Hebrews here in Hebrews chapter two, and uh, I was thinking on on the lesson we had on Wednesday night, and he said it was one that wrote, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. See, let 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 these not only be scriptures, but let these. Uh, become word and transform our lives. Lest at any time we should let them slip or we should slip away. Uh, it says in verse 3, how shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? It's a great salvation, saints. Uh, to, be, to be saved from the power of sin is a great salvation. To just get forgiveness for our sins is not so great salvation. But to be saved from the power of sin, to rule over sin, uh, to, or to, to walk in grace that, so that sin doesn't rule over us, it's a great salvation. If only we understand what great salvation God has given us, uh, things will be different in our lives. Uh, we, will, we will really become honest before the Lord. And before men too. And the first thing that God requires from every person is honesty. Not purity. Purity takes time. But the first thing we need to come uh, before the Lord. We need to come as honest children. And if we begin with honesty saints. And if we remain honest till the end of our lives. We will make tremendous progress in our Christian life. See even if you fail. Even if you fail. And we all fail. Uh, there's no one that's perfect. We all fail uh, in, in, in intervals. We, we, we do slip up sometimes and we all fail. But if we remain honest, see, see there's, there's a phrase in the, in, in the scriptures uh, which talk about walking in the light. What does it mean walk to walk in the light? It may sound very spiritual. But what does it exactly mean? Let me turn to you to, you to turn some scriptures here. Let's turn to Isaiah first. Isaiah, the second chapter. This great prophet that God sent to, to Judah here in Isaiah chapter 2. And here he says in verse 5, let's uh, straight read verse 5. Isaiah says, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. He says, come and let us be, uh, walking the light just means that come to the Lord the way you are. Don't come with pretensions. Uh, come to the Lord and acknowledge your, your, your shortcomings and acknowledge your sin. That's, that's what it means to walk in the light. That's what Jesus was sent for, to show us the light. The scripture says, they who sat in darkness saw a great light. See, the great salvation requires great light first. That great light needs to be sh shown on, in our hearts first. That just shows us uh, the, the depravity of our, our human, human life, of our, uh, of our heart. Uh, G uh, here in John the 8th chapter, it again talk, G uh, Jesus, uh, it talks about Jesus and here in uh, uh, John chapter 8, and uh, verse 12, Jesus tells them, Jesus makes this statement. Uh, then then spake Jesus again unto them, John, the Gospel of John chapter 8 and verse 12. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that follows me. When you follow Jesus, you, 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 you see... Uh, you and I, when we follow Jesus, we see the, the darkness in us. See, what's the, what's the, when you walk into a dark room, you don't know where, where the dirt is. But what does the light do? It just throws light on each and every corner of the room that I come to know where the dirt is. And then I can work on it and I can clean the, that dirty places or that dirt or, the, or those cobwebs in the room. But as long as we are walking in darkness, as long as we are covering our iniquities, our transgressions, there is no way we can follow Jesus. The reason why people cover their iniquity is because they are not following Jesus Christ. They don't want to walk in the light. But Jesus said that he is, whosoever followeth me shall never walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. And the light exposes the, the, the truth. 
It exposes the truth about myself and the things that were hidden in my heart for so long. Here in the Gospel of John and chapter 3, let's turn back a few pages. And here in John chapter 3, and in verse, we all know the scripture that God sent this son not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But here in verse 19, it says, And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. How? How did light come into the world? Through Jesus Christ. Light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That, that even after the light, God sent his son into the world. John said men still love darkness. How many of us, even after coming to church, still love to live in darkness? You know why? Because he says their, their deeds were evil. Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. An honest person will walk into the light and say, yes, Lord, this is my fault. It's okay if my deeds are, are exposed. I want to be reproved, O Father. Verse 21, but he says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. It's not once. I came to the light once when I found the Lord. But do I keep coming to the light? Verse 21 says, He that doeth or keeps, keeps doing the truth keeps coming to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they were wrought in God. We need to walk in the walking in the light means it basically means being honest. Being honest is there's no pretensions. I'm not I don't pretend before the Lord. I might pretend before God's people. Even that is that's not not right. I need to be the way I am. The way I am in church, the same way I am at my home, the same way I am at my office. I'm not one 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 life in the church and one life outside. There's no pretensions, no hypocrisy. See, example, if you get angry, just accept, yes, I got angry. That's what God ex expected from Adam. When he ate that fruit, uh, he, God didn't expect Adam to say, it's because of the wife, it's because of the woman that you gave me. He should have just said, yes, Lord, I ate it. It's my mistake. See, sin brought about dishonesty. Sin brought that covering. A sin brought in justification. A man or a woman who justifies is still walking in darkness. A man or a woman that justifies his or her wrong behavior or wrongdoing or the sin still is walking in darkness. And they love being in darkness. They may come and scream and shout in church, sing few choruses, lift up their hands and tears rolling down their cheek. It's all pretension. It's all pretension. Because they still love darkness. They don't want their deeds to be exposed. But honesty is like that thief on that cross. He says, Lord, I'm guilty. Honesty is like David in Psalms chapter 51. He says, when Nathan told him, thou art that man, David didn't say, oh, but uh, let me see, it's because of that woman, it's because of, it's because I was at home and I was depressed and, and this and that. Oh no, he says, yes, I am that man, Lord, against thee and thee only have I sinned and he repented. He, he, he repented in dust, sackcloth and ashes. That's why he was a man that God really, really loved with all his heart. He was a man after God's own calling. After God's heart, the scripture says. That's why David loved God and God loved David and there was a relationship between them both. See, it's, it's not blaming the way I was brought up or because of my childhood or because of my parents or because of my spouse or because of my boss. We might blame n number of things for our, uh, our wrong. That's just justification. Oh, because I have a bad, because I had a bad childhood. Oh, because of this. Oh, that's okay. But when we come in Christ Jesus, all things have to become new. 
It's, it, that's, that's okay for a person who's new in the Lord, who just comes to the Lord. But we who claim ourselves to be born again and speak in tongues for I don't know how long, how can we still justify our wrongdoings? How can we still blame somebody else for the words that we spoke or the actions that we did? Or the gestures that we, sh we, 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 we uh, showed through our body language. How can we blame somebody else? It's okay for a newborn babe in Christ. If he or she justifies. That's why saints, let's be honest. There's no spiritual growth in our lives. There's no spiritual growth. All that God wanted Adam was to just be honest in that garden. All that God wanted from Eve was just to say, yes, yes, God, I, I was deceived. I didn't go and ask my husband. I, I, I spoke a lot to this, to, this, uh, to this bright light speaking to me. I was deceived and I ate and I even asked my husband to eat it. See, the problem in marriage also, saints, is because husbands and wives are not honest. And the reason why they are not honest is because of pride. It's because of pride and pride came from the devil and pride makes me to keep myself or guard myself uh, from, from the truth. Uh, it's very hard to penetrate the walls of pride and unless I break down those walls of pride, unless I humble myself, even the truth can't help me. That, that's, the, that's the truth. That's how the devil sees that if, you, if, if, if the devil sees if there's a spirit of justification in us, that's how he gets a foothold in our lives and that's how he gets in. That's how the devil gets in. See, if we are sick and we go to the doctor, aren't we honest with the doctor by what's happening to us? Why are we honest? Because we want the doctor to treat us right. If you are not honest with your doctor saying that no matter how smart or how capable that doctor is, that doctor won't help you. Unless you tell that doctor what's really happening to you and because of what it's happening to you. Right? Because I ate that such and such thing. Because I, 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 I did some things, I ate some things that were wrong or, or I did or, or because of my lifestyle or, or whatever it is. You have to be true to that doctor for the doctor to treat you right. Since many of us are true to the doctors, but we are not honest when we come before the Lord. Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad that we, we, we are honest with the doctors, but we are not honest with God? And that's why God can't do much with us saints. That's why the Lord can't do much with our lives. That's why we can't see deliverances. That's why we can't see healings. That's why we can't. That's why we and are we are still in bondage to our sins. There's a scripture in Proverbs, the twenty-eighth chapter. Proverbs, chapter twenty-eight. Proverbs, chapter twenty-eight, verse thirteen. The wise man says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Let's stop covering up our, our sins and our wrongdoings and justifying our wrongdoings and think that, oh, son, oh I fool people and even I fool God. No, we, we can't fool God, saints, and we can't fool ourselves. We need to understand that we can fool people around us. But you can't fool God and you can't fool yourself. And he says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. There will never be a spiritual prosperity in that life. But whosoever confesseth, whosoever is honest and comes before the Lord with all honesty. I'm talking about the Lord being honest before the Lord uh, tonight. Maybe on Sunday I'll talk that how we need to be honest with people also and how we need to treat people right. Even that is important. We'll talk about that maybe on Sunday. But he says, Whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them and leaves that way of justifying himself. I forsake that way. I forsake means I just, I have turned my back to it. He shall have mercy. 
Here is Psalms, the 32nd chapter. It's, it's again talking about David, one of my heroes in the Bible. I would love to sit and talk to him in the kingdom. Here in Psalms, Psalm 32. Let's read from verse 1. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man, verse 2, unto, the, unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile, no deceit, no hypocrisy, no pretense. Uh, he is the way he is. She is the way she is. She comes before the Lord the way she is. He, he, he comes before the Lord the way he is. There is no guile. They're like Jesus told about Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. And you know that Nathaniel was, 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 was saved. He was saved. I believe he became the uh, disciple. I don't know whether he was. He became an apostle. I don't know whether his name was changed later or whatever. But one thing is sure, he became a disciple. He became a disciple of Jesus Christ because he was honest. There was no guile in his in his in his spirit, in his uh, in, in in his lifestyle. But David says, now he knew, David says, blessed is a man who's, who is forgiven, uh, whom, whom the Lord doesn't impute iniquity. But there was a time in David's life, in verse 3, where David says, when I kept silence. There was a time when I was silent about my sins. I didn't confess my sins to the Lord. I was, I was covering my iniquity. I was covering it up. Uh, and I was silent before the Lord. And what happened? My bones waxed old. Uh, there was maybe a sickness. In David's life, some sicknesses are because of our um, our 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 uh, uh, our unconfessed sins. Not all sicknesses because of sin, but there are some sicknesses that is because of our sin, and because of uh, our our hard heart, and because of our pride, and because of dishonest, because we are not we are not willing to uh, to go to the Lord and 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 to ask forgiveness to the Lord and uh, from those people whom we have hurt. But David says, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. He couldn't even sleep at night. Right? There was something that was, that was, if, you're, if you are a child of God, saints, you, you, if, you, and if you're living a dishonest life, there will be no rest in your soul. There will be no peace. The peace of God, the joy of the Lord will be taken away from such a man or a woman. And the wicked are like a troubled sea, the scripture says, that cannot rest. That brings up muck and mire. And he says, for day and night was for thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. And he says, Selah. Don't go ahead, stop and think about it. Let's stop and think whether we have done this. If yes, let's forsake it. Let's not cover up our sins. Let's the, let, let, let the light expose it so that, so that the Lord forgives us and doesn't impute that iniquity to us but gives us the grace to rise above it and to walk in freedom. Freedom from that sin. I don't do that again. I don't behave the way I, I behaved again. I don't, I don't talk the way I talked again but the Lord has given me freedom from that. I rule over that sin in my life. And in that part of my life, I'm following Christ. That's an overcomer. That's an overcomer in one area of their life. That's how you overcome in every area of your life. And he says in verse 5, he says, I acknowledged my sin. But I couldn't keep quiet, O oh Lord. I couldn't keep quiet. I, I just acknowledged my sin. Jeremiah, the scripture says in third chapter, if only Jeremiah told Israel, if only you could acknowledge your sin, things will be different. And David says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Again, Selah, stop and think whether we have done this. Whether we came before the Lord honest. If you're honest with the Lord, since He will meet with you where you are, and I'm, as I told you last time, I'm encouraging you that there is no um, dung hill that the Lord can't pick us out from. There is no uh, no sin that God cannot forgive and and draw us out of it. 
If you hear something from the word of God, from the voice of God, when you hear God speak to you through the Holy Spirit, and if that convicts you, saints, don't try to cover it up. Whoever you may be, if I, even if it's an elder like me, and if God speaks to me, saints, and if I try to cover it up and justify myself, I, I won't grow an iota in the Lord. I won't, I won't grow an inch. I will just stand here and blabber something and walk off. But nothing. It won't help me. It won't help the people. It will just be a church, an apostate church. That's it. Nothing else. No matter whom, how much we have messed up, saints, let's come to the Lord because the Lord still loves us. It's never late to take a U-turn. It's never late. God will still meet with us. God will still, because God loves us completely and loves us unconditionally. The scripture says, I love you with an everlasting love. Just come to me. Come to me. Come to me all you labor and are heavy laden with all your guilt and sin. Just come to me honestly. Jesus says, and learn of me, for I am meek and I am lowly. Come to me and I will give you rest. It's not only for the people who work. It's not only for the people who, 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 who do some physical work and are tired, no. It's, it's, it's for people who are striving against sin and are tired that they cannot do it. They cannot overcome that sin on their own. That scripture is for those people. Lord, I tried, but I can't do it, O oh Lord. Jesus has come unto me. I'll help you overcome that sin. David says, I acknowledged my sin. I confessed my transgressions and the Lord forgave. But we need to go a step further. It's not just forgive, forgiveness where we need to stop to. It's overcoming that sin where I don't do it again. And we can experience that only when we are honest. See, God can take what is vain and what is empty and what is without form and turn it into a paradise. God can do that and only God can do that to take a man who's wrecked by sin and to make him whole again. Oh, praise his holy name. It's just like my Lord. Nobody else can do it. If you see a man who's wrecked by sin and, and, and now turn, turn, his, turn, turn to the Lord and the Lord has changed his life. There's only one thing. The Lord has done that. Nobody else. It's just like my Lord. Only the Lord can do it. Not that man also. The man just committed himself and surrendered himself to the Lord. The rest, the Lord helped him do it. The Lord helped him do it. He didn't sit back then, but the Lord, as the Lord strengthened him, he kept doing it. Since that's how we follow the Lamb. That's how we, 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 we walk in the light. Here in Genesis chapter 1, we see this in creation. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and I believe when God created the heaven and the earth he created the earth perfect because if God creates something he doesn't create it without form and shapeless and void but verse 2 says that the earth was without form so maybe something must have happened and I'm not here to uh, to advocate gap theory or to say what happened. If God wanted to write, he would have written that when, uh, when the, the devil fall. We have a little glimpse of that in Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28. Uh, that, that thou wast in Eden and, and thou wast uh, um, decked up with all the precious stones and all those things talking about Lucifer. But something happened and the earth was without form. Sin always makes us without form and void and dark that's what sin does when sin comes in everything is dark and without form and void and that's what happened to the earth if god wants to see this book is written for men not for angels that's why maybe god didn't uh, lead moses to write that if this book was written for angels the angels would have known how did how did lucifer fall but we are not supposed that's not that's not so important for our salvation the important thing is sin came through Lucifer. That's it. 
And he said the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And what happened after that? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And verse 3 says, and God started speaking. And the word of God also came. The Spirit of the Lord and the word of God started working then. And that Spirit of God and that word of God together transformed that void formless empty and vain earth into a paradise in the end of that first chapter in verse 21 is it verse 21 verse 31 sorry where God saw everything he said it is not only good he says it is very good that without form void dark earth which was good for nothing became very good because of what? Because of the Spirit of God that moved and because of the Word of God that went forth. That's a picture of how God works with us. See? See, that's a picture of how God... See, when a newborn baby uh, comes to birth, see, that baby, you can say, is the closest to Adam. Or it's the closest to heaven when we are born. No pastor, no man of God, no prophet is as pure as that newborn baby that was born today. You can see, if you look at the baby's eyes, you can see nothing but just purity in that eye. Just no, no um, guile, no dishonesty in that baby. That baby is the closest to heaven. Yes, there is inherent sin inside, but there is no committed sin as yet. But as the child grows, starts throwing tantrums and has a, a has, and, and throws some fits and, and has, a, has a mind strong will and starts, starts uh, speaking lies then and then grows and, and, and does things that he's not supposed to do and it, uh, disobedient to parents and then grows up and starts lusting with, the, with their eyes and all those things happen in that, that baby which was so pure as that baby grows into a child and a young man, it, that, 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 that man is now deeper in sin and that man's life becomes void and empty and dark. But then God reaches out. That's how God reached out to me. That's how God reached out to us where we were. And what did God expect? What did God expect to, uh, from us? Uh, to when he found us not that not that to say God I am full no but to just accept honestly that Lord I am empty I am void from inside uh, there is nothing but darkness in me there is no uh, there is no there is no shape of Jesus in my life I am without form of God and some of us sorry to say we are still like that we are still we may be for years in the church but we are still empty and void and dark and without form though outwardly we may be putting up a good show though outwardly we may be showing ourselves to and pretending ourselves to be a zealous christian but sorry to say brother and sister we are still dark and empty and void and shapeless We can't see the form of Jesus even being formed in us. I just put on a show from outside. I come to church thrice a week. I come for cleaning. I, I play in the band. I sing songs. I, I help the church. I do things but, but there's still darkness and emptiness in me. But if you come before the Lord the way you are in honesty and ask God, God is there hope for me? Well, God will say, yes, there is hope for you. Read Genesis chapter 1. If only we acknowledge our transgressions and come to the Lord the way we are and accept that we are empty, the Lord will fill us. But if we come to the Lord full of self, the Lord will reject us. See, the Lord changed this whole earth through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And that's how, if we, if we open up ourselves, if I'm open to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, God can change me too. He can change our lives too. That don't happen in a day. 
or 10 days or one year or 10 years it may take some time because what God did he, cre he in this in this chapter of creation we see that God took six days to, to create the earth and the things that were in the earth he could have done that in a moment why did God take six days to create everything he could have done that in a moment, not even in a day. In a moment, he could have just said and everything would have been there. But you know why God took six days? Just to show us that the work that he does in our lives and the work of change that God does in our life doesn't happen in a day. It takes time. It takes Sometimes it takes a lifetime and it really takes a lifetime for this void dark empty life to become a paradise and to become into the image of Jesus Christ that we are no longer conformed to this world but we are transformed by the renewing of our minds we are no longer ruled by the by the law of the of the land or the world when I say law I mean the law of sin but I am ruled by the, uh, by the law of righteousness. I am no longer a servant to sin. But I am a servant of, of righteousness. There is no longer hypocrisy. But the Lord has worked upon my vessel. And this vessel which was void and empty and dark. Has now become a useful vessel which the Lord will use for his glory. Not only in this life but also in the life to come. That's what I can learn from Genesis chapter 1. That's what Paul talked about his life also. He says that, see Paul was converted, I don't know when, maybe 30, 35 years old, when he, when he really met the Lord on the way to Damascus. But, but if history is, history is right, I believe Paul died at the age of 68 or 70, 66, 67. I'm, I'm not very sure, but, but he served the Lord for about 30, 35, 40 years. And he says, he makes a statement here in 2 Corinthians. 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 you can see Paul uh, being so honest about it and it is this is a beautiful chapter which talks about the treasure that we have in our earthen vessels and how the Lord <coughs> helps us and and leads us and how death works in us but life in the people but here in verse 16 Paul says that for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perishes, Paul had come, he says, I, I, my body is becoming weak. I am no longer as strong as I was when I met the Lord on the road to Damascus. He says, now I am weak. My body is becoming weak. I can't do the things that I did the way I did when I was 30, 35 years old. But he says, though our outward man perish, yet, yet the inward man, inward man is renewed. How? How? It says day by day, day by day I am becoming a more like Jesus Christ. Day by day I walk in the light. Day by day I am following Jesus Christ. Day by day I am, I am, I am, I am gaining a little victory over sin. Day by day, day by day. Since remember those days when you were illuminated. Paul again talks about that in Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, he says, remember the former days when you, will, when you were illuminated that you endured so great afflictions and you were made a gazing stock but you kept on serving the Lord. Remember saints those days when we received the Holy Ghost? How that we were on fire for the Lord? And now, because you know why? Because that time we were no one. We were nobody. Nobody knew us a lot. Uh, we were new in the church maybe. Uh, we were the, we considered ourselves to become be the least of everyone and we considered everybody else to become be uh, we esteemed everyone else above us but as we journey as we grew in the lord as we did some sacrifices as we did some work for the lord as we were uh, we were we were being used by the lord sometimes that spirit has changed and now I am not a nobody but I am a somebody now I am a somebody but from within 
I am worse than that day when I received the Holy Ghost. Are you getting me? I hope so. I can't even know what your answer is. I can't, don't even know how many of you are online. Maybe when you even hear this later. If you are really honest, our present condition is worse than what we were when we found Jesus Christ. That's the truth. But there are few who really have grown in the Lord. Who really have overcome their human, human weaknesses and human nature. See, it's, 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 it's an amazing thing, saints, to fall in the hands of the living God. If you are honest, you'll accept that your inner life today is worse than those days when you were illuminated. If you are really honest, you will accept it. Honesty is the first step towards change. I need to be willing to change. I'll only be willing to change if I am honest to accept that I need to change. Let's be honest to the Lord, saints. Let's not have a form of godliness. Let's, let's not be satisfied with the things that we did for so many years. It didn't take us anywhere. It didn't take us anywhere. It didn't. I'm sorry, but this is the truth. It didn't take us anywhere. And I hope that we don't stay the same and then we don't go into apostasy, spiritual apostasy. We will have the name as gospel assembly, we will claim ourselves to be the body of Christ, but we will be just another apostate church in apostate Christianity outside. But let's be honest to the Lord. Let's confess our sins to the Lord. Let's continue this lesson. Let's see how, what it means to, to treat people right and how important it is and what it means to confess our sins even to people. That's the other side of the coin. I'm honest with God and I'm honest with people too. Let's see. Let's see how the Lord wants us to wants us to change our lives. See, this is a, this is a this is a this is a call from the Lord to mend our ways. This is a call from the Lord to change our lifestyle. Let, let's leave that dual lifestyle Let's forsake that and let's be honest. Let's be the way I am in church. You will find me the same when I am outside. Can you tell that about yourself to yourself? Not to others. Can you tell that about yourself to yourself? That's the question I would like to ask and leave with each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Let's all pray. I hope and pray that the Lord blesses this, these words to each and every heart. Talking to the local church here, I hope the local church members really get online and hear this message. If they are busy working, I understand, but I hope they, after they get back home, they really uh, sit honestly and take these words for themselves. It can work wonders. So let's pray for the saints of God. Let's not forget to pray for the needs of the church. Let's all continue to pray that the Lord makes a way for us to walk in His sanctuary again very soon. It's only the Lord that can intervene and stop this pandemic from growing in our land because the people and the land are inseparable. We deserve, we get the sickness, we deserve. We get the pandemic, we deserve. We deserve this, saints. In fact, we deserve more than this. It's a time of introspection the Lord has given us. We can still see His mercy and grace in that He's protected every saint of this church. He's protected each and every saint. But let's not turn that grace into lasciviousness and live the way we, are, we were living prior to this pandemic. But let us, let us forsake all our evil doings and let us serve the Lord with a singleness of heart. Amen. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for this service here. And I pray that let these words have an 
have an effect on each and every heart and soul because it's not my word of God, it's your word. And let the scriptures, O oh Lord, become word and dwell in, in, in us, in our flesh. And mold our worldly nature, Father. And give us more of your godly ways. Help us to follow Jesus Christ and to walk in the light and to be honest about ourselves and to come to you honestly. Father, and you turn this life of ours, which is void and empty and shapeless, into something that will be used for you, for your glory, O oh Father. Once again, we thank you for everything. Thank you for, this, for protecting each and every saint in this local church and throughout the body of Christ. And we pray that you continue to protect each and every saint in this church and throughout the body. Bless the ministry. Brother and sister Senji, cover them. And throughout the body of Christ, all the ministers and all the weekend services, Lord, throughout the body, bless all the services and all your ministers of God. And be with us till we meet again on Sunday. Bless us and keep us close to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.